Hello, mysterious person behind the screen. And today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be taking a look at one of my favourite series of all time. Primeval. Now, the original version of Primeval, which is the British version, ran for five series. I've got them all here. And um, that was the sped-up version of the Primeval theme music you heard in the um, intro. Um, basically, it follows um, a group of people... Um, tasked with dealing with creatures from prehistoric times coming through to our world uh, by means of these anomalies in time that are popping up everywhere and uh, these creatures are coming through and they need to fight them and that's, bas that's the basic premise and um, it was great, I really enjoyed it I mean, many say that it's just a Doctor Who and Torchwood rip-off especially Torchwood with like the team going to deal with something out of the ordinary um, but for me, when I was younger, this was like second to Doctor Who. This It was like Doctor Who and then this was my favourite show. And I was just like, I just loved it. I, I, watched, I would watch every series again and again and again and again. Um, and I, I just loved it. I, um, I really didn't get what people had against it. And as it went on, people t seemed to end up loving it as well. Um, but then series five came along. Is this ser yeah? This is series five. Series five came along and it ended the series. Um, we don't know if there's going to be a series six. Series five ended on a cliffhanger. You, we have no clue if there's going to be a series six. They made a, a North American spin-off show that was just abysmal. It just completely ruined everything. Um, like everything's ruined. I heard they're making a film, but none of the original cast returned. None. Um, only Connor returns. Um, that's it. No one else. So um, I'm gonna go through each of the series now, um, giving an overview of them and um, saying my thoughts on them. And then yeah, it's gonna be good. So first we have series one. There's series one there. Um, what, what what year was this? Two thousand six. I have no clue. Uh, two thousand six, two thousand seven. I think it was two thousand seven. Um, but yeah, this is um kind of feels separate from the rest of the series because of course it's setting it all up. It's um, but the tone's different because there's no arc, and the arc is basically the base of operation, and that turned up in series two but in this they just have a boring office uh uh type thing and um they it, um it's just it was it's, it's a great series series one not one of my favorite series but it's great because it does do a good job at setting it all up it's six episodes long i think each episode is an hour or 45 minutes um one of them and um it's a great series. Um, it introduces all the main characters, um, and as we'll get onto when I go through series two, it does feel so separate from series two, three, four, and five. Well, four and five feel separate from the whole thing, but um, series one is good. Um, but it's not one of my favourites. And I'll uh, just uh, read you the blurb here. When evolutionary zoologist Nick Cutter discovers prehistoric creatures alive and well in the present day, the natural world is turned on its head and humanity faces a threat to its very existence. Unexplained anomalies are ripping holes in the fabric of time, allowing creatures from the past and the future to roam the modern world. Cutter and his team struggle to keep the looming disaster secret while dealing with savage monsters, dry, giant insects, prehistoric parasites and other deadly foes. Cutter also has to deal with a deeply personal dilemma. He discovers that his wife, Helen, uh, missing, believed dead for eight years, has actually been travelling in time through the anomalies. Now she is back with possible answers to the riddle of the anom anomalies. Yeah. But is it an answer that she is willing to share? So uh, the basic cast here, we have Cutter, Claudia Brown, uh, Connor Temple, who he's like comic relief character. Uh, he's in every series, and he was uh, one of the only original cast in like series uh, five and four. Um, Abby again, one of the other original casts in series five and four, and uh, Stephen. So 
yeah, that's the main cast for series one. And um, you have Ben Miller as the, like, head of it, uh, James Lester. He's absolutely hilarious in this series. Again, he's in series five and four as well. He's um, the other um, one. And uh, he's just brilliant in it. I love his performance. And um, that's why I was really excited when he was in uh, Robot of Sherwood in Doctor Who. So, um, yeah. Okay, now we're on to series two. And here's the principal cast for the series two there. And um I'll read you the blurb because... You won't understand anything else until I read you this blurb. Um, can I just say there will be spoilers in this. Um, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen Primeval, then you need to before watching this. Um, the blurb. Professor Nick Cutter is having a very bad day. His estranged wife Helen has deceived him, tricking him into going through the anomalies one last time, but something has gone terribly wrong. Upon his return to the present, the world as he knows it has changed, and he and Helen are the only ones who know. Claudia Brown has never existed, and the other members of Cutter's team have no idea who she was. Can Cutter convince them that their actions have inadvertently altered the course of nature, although he has no, absolutely no idea what went wrong or how he can fix it? Along the way, the team encounters some beastly opponents that are continuing to fight their way through the anomalies. From a family of raptors going wild in the aisles of a shopping mall, a saber-toothed tiger at an amusement park, um, to a woolly mammoth holding up the traffic on the M25. The creatures just keep on coming. Ooh, this has audio commentaries. I'm going to listen to them. I've never seen them before in here. Um, but the principal cast, uh, Cutter, Stephen, Connor... Jenny Lewis, basically, there's Claudia Brown's doppelganger, because she doesn't exist in this world um, anymore, and she's the doppelganger, but she's played by the same person, and uh, Abby there. So, Series 2. Series 2 is one of my favourite series. It might be my second, fa it's probably my second favourite series, actually. I love the creativeness of some of the creatures in it, like the mammoth on the M25. I've got to love that, and um, it's just a good... Uh, season really and um spoilers go away now if you haven't seen it Stephen dies so uh yeah but yeah series two great series okay so now we're on to my favorite series series three um the primeval team are back and nick cutter is fighting to refocus his embattled team who are still reeling from Stephen's death and the scale of helen's betrayal Cutter's crew are joined by some new recruits in the form of Maverick policeman Danny Quinn, Sparky Egyptologist Sarah Page, and the new leader of the Ark Security Forces, Captain Becker. But as the anomalies continue to present an unrelenting series of threats, the task at hand seems almost impossible. With events getting wild, the creatures steeped in ancient folklore begin to make an appearance, and it becomes clear that the origins of myths and legends are linked with the mysterious anomalies. But it's not just deadly creatures that the team has to contend with. The cloak of secrecy be be behind which they have been working is the begin is beginning to slip, and questions are being asked as the conspiracy spreads its net wide. And as deadlier creatures continue to rampage through the anomalies, the team faces a threat to the future of not just the Ark, but of mankind itself. Um, <laughs> um, principal cast again. Cutter dies in episode three. Nick Cutter dies. Man, that's a weird... I like that episode, though. It's it's cool. It, it's, it, the only thing I don't like about that episode is cloning in it. Like, there's a clone of Cutter around and everything. It's just a bit silly for me. In a, a show about anomalies and dinosaurs coming through. <laughs> um, but we have the principal cast. We have Danny Quinn, who's the leader. Fan reception is so negative to him. That's why he's only in this one season. Um, but I like him. I'm going to be the one to say I like him. Uh, Connor, Abby... Captain Becker and Sarah Page only in this one season again. Um, but Series 3, why is it my favourite series? Well, for one thing, you have 10 episodes instead of the usual 6 and 7 we've had before. Uh, you have a giant G-Rex rampaging across an airport. You have these ostrich creature things rampaging across a field. And like, you know, Danny Quinn being an absolute badass in the truck there and um it's just a really creative creative series uh jenny lewis leaves again they all leave in this one it seems and um yeah i i really like series three i can watch it over and over and over again i uh can't get enough of series three it's it's uh it's 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 really great and um 
definitely, definitely uh, my favourite series. So after Series 3, Primeval was cancelled, but not really. Series 3 ended on a bit of a cliffhanger with uh, Danny, Connor and Abby stuck in prehistoric times. They had no way to get out and then it just ended. Um, and we all knew it was going to be the last series. It was out there. And then about like a day after, they just came out saying, actually, no, it's not the last series because it's been put on hiatus for a year. So then a year later, in 2010, we came back with series four. Um, only Becca, Abby and Connor and James Lester return. Um, so there's a lot of new cast members in this. Um, but I'll read you the blurb. It's one year on, and following the death of Johnson, the arc has been shaken by the long-term disappearance of Abby Connor and team leader Danny. The government has appointed an entrepreneurial scientist, Philip Burton, to take charge of the operation with a brand new building and new team. Ex-soldier and zoologist Matt, the highly efficient, if unconventional, Jess, the mysterious Gideon, and an anomaly travelling Ethan all join the team. But are they ready for the challenges ahead? As Connor and Abby finally escape the terrifying creatures of the Cretaceous to an uncertain welcome back of the Ark, Danny continues to fight his way through a Pilocene Age Rift Valley. Desperate to return to the team with a vital secret that will change the whole outlook with a new team and new creature threats, the Ark team are facing the toughest challenges yet. Um, oh, look at that. Look at the box. Eee, it's been ripped. Oh dear. Um, series 4, it's alright. You can easily see that Series 4 and 5 were supposed to be one series. Even in the making of documentaries for these, they, they in Series 5 they put Series 4 Part 2. Um, but I have to say, Series 4 is responsible for one of my favourite episodes ever in the whole of Primeval, favourite episodes ever. They're in a school and there's a um, creature roaming around the school and it kills one of the teachers in Saturday detention. And it's just brilliant. I love that episode. It's funny, it's dark. It's just awesome. I absolutely love the episode. And um, yeah, Series 4, it's kind of a mixed bag as well, but it was a good return. It was it was a welcome return. Change of lighting, because this is a lot later in the day. Um, but after Series 4, we had Series 5, which, is a, which was a direct continuation of Series 4. Um, back at full strength with Abby, Connor, Lester, Jess and Matt on board, the ARC team must race against time once again in its fight to save the public from the terrifying creatures appearing through the anomalies. The members encounter vicious burrowing creatures, enormous underwater predators, a raptor on the streets, on the rampage in Victorian London, a Tyrannosaurus Rex prowling the streets and a mass of ferocious future beetles laying siege to the ARC headquarters. But even as the team faces its most formidable challenges yet, it may have more to fear from inside the exorgan the organization. Can any of them trust the new lab assistant April? Why is Connor set on helping Philip? And can Matt and Abby do anything to stop him? A secret plans and betrayals come to light. It's time for the team to decide just whose side it's on. Um, yeah, series five is a bit of a letdown to be honest. It's um. It's definitely my least favourite series. Series 3 is my favourite and then Series 5 is obviously my least favourite. And um, it's it's just forgettable more than anything else because it's just like none of the episodes are particularly memorable. Um, so just for that reason it's my least favourite series. It's not all bad but yeah, not one to end Primeval on really. Not a good one to end it on. I just wish that they'd bring, bring it back for a Series 6, because the cliffhanger's just painful. But, anyway, would I recommend Primeval? Well, on the strength of Series 1, 2 and 3, yes. If it was only Series 4 and 5, then I could slightly recommend it to you, but not really. You can find the DVDs cheap on Amazon, you can find a whole set with um, every series in and a box set pretty easily, or you can just buy them individually, say if you want to buy Series 1 to see if you like it or something. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed my look at uh, the Primeval series. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe. This was a really long video and I'll see you in my next one.